Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the GPS 530 as well as the uh, smaller version from Working Title. Now in our previous video what we had actually done is uh, kind of walk you through sort of the overview and the basics. But today what we're going to do is we're going to kind of show you the pre-flight side of things as well as how you can load in a flight plan. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, we just booted up the plane, uh, kind of got everything all ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out a little bit because uh, we don't need to be letting up our mixture. The avionics switch has been clicked to the on position, so everything's uh, warming up. Uh, that's the GPS, uh, that'd be the autopilot test rather. And when you first plug in the real GPS, of course, it's got to run through and it's got to do all its database scans. Uh, one thing I always warn people and kind of recommend to people is you got these little slots here for the purposes of actually holding onto your thumb. But a lot of the GPSs will actually have little card readers where you can stick in a card that has like your flight plan and everything. So I'm going to come in here and press the OK button to each. It's going to go ahead and bring up a little menu here. It's going to have the self test. Some people are saying, wait, can I go to the set fuel full and go, ah, no, that doesn't work. Sorry to say, but the fuel totalizer feature of this GPS is not yet simulated. Otherwise, you could come up here and say I have 50 gallons, and it would actually keep track of your fuel flow for you, which is actually really, really neat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the bottom and press the ENT. It's going to do its initial GPS search. In the real world, I kid you not, this can take five or six minutes for it to actually locate the correct GPSs that you need. What it'll do is it'll highlight the correct GPS. If there's 120, there's 11, we got 29er, and I need four GPS. Oh, we got multiple GPSs. All right, we're going to have a very, very accurate position in that particular case. So you can see the two GPS systems are kind of latching on and whoosh, we are now ready to rock. Now, these two GPS units are very, very, very similar to each other. At the end of the day, um, which one you use is going to be dependent on the aircraft that you have as well as, you know, what you have. In the real world, um, I have this exact same GPS unit in the Cessna 182 that I fly. So I've had a, a little bit of experience with it. Of course, what I do in the real world is have to shut the roads off because some person always turns roads on and it'll make you insane. Anyway, so let's go ahead and set up a flight plan. Um, we've seen a little bit of functionality of this in an existing video. We're just, like I said, going to concentrate on sort of the pre-flight flight plan aspect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the FPL button. Oh, that's all good. You're probably saying, don't I have to come down here and press it? Don't push that one yet, trust me. So instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to the top unit here. I'm gonna go ahead and press the press cursor button and that's gonna give us the ability to navigate between the different waypoints. Now this is a relatively easy process. Uh, one thing I wanna say right away though is there can be a couple bugs as far as the way the list and the en route and everything is sort of simulated. So be careful in the order that you enter things. Now, it's actually safer to create your flight plan in the main flight plan page and then load it into the GPS than it is to try to do it like this. But you know, science because, haha. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick my first waypoint. So I'm gonna be going up to Gardner Mass first. Uh, we're gonna be flying up to Keene today, that's a Kilo Echo Echo November, but we're gonna go to Golf Delta Mike first. Uh, fun story about that one. In the uh, real world, I was going up to Orange County Regional because it's about 50 miles. And again, anybody knows 50 miles knows that's cross country. So uh, one of the problems of course is they're skydiving and uh, they got right in the way and we had to go land at Gardner instead of Orange County. And it was this rinky dink airport and I kid you not, I thought I was the only person to land there in a month, <laughs> which is kind of fun. All right, so now watch this. Oh, we've got Gardner loaded in. I press Fipple and you'll notice there are no magenta lines of safety at all. The only thing is, is uh, Gardner is now highlighted. Now the reason it did that is because we haven't told it how to get to Gardner. So I'm going to press Fipple again uh, one more time. Now some of you are like, can I put Hartford in as my first waypoint? Yeah, you could if you're taking out from Hartford, which obviously we are. But if you do that, it'll immediately ignore that waypoint because we're there already. Instead, what I recommend doing is highlighting the first point, pressing the direct coup button, and you see how it says select waypoint, you're like, haha, I like that. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna navigate and press the enter key. I'm gonna come down to where it says activate, press enter. Now you'll see this little um, magenta arrow that appeared right here. This tells us that Gardner Mass right now, this is a VOR, has been selected as my current waypoint. If you actually look down here, you'll notice the Southern GPS now recognizes that. Remember when I told you not to put anything in the bottom GPS? I wasn't kidding because this bottom GPS, unlike the real plane, will copy off the top GPS. So it's just kind of one of those things. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna dial in our next waypoint. So from there, we're gonna go up to Echo Echo November, which is uh, gonna be just north of that. That's gonna be Keen VOR, so uh, relatively easy to get to. I've uh, been there a bunch of times in the real world. There's a really straightforward and really neat approach. I had a very, very close counter with a Bonanza at one point up here, which I always thought was kind of amusing. It wasn't amusing at the time, but the best part was air traffic control calling me saying, uh, I know you cancel flight following, but uh, there's somebody being dumb. So I pressed uh, enter there, and you'll notice nothing bad happened, and you notice the magenta arrow stayed on our garden mass, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. So then our final our terminus here, we're going to go up to Manchester, New Hampshire. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just like I've been doing, I'm using the little knob to change the letter, using the big knob in order to change the positions. We're going to go to Mike Hotel Tango, which is going to be MHT, just like that, and we're going to go backwards. Yes, you can go forwards and backwards, in case you're curious. Perfect, Manchester, New Hampshire. Delightful. Now this needle did a nice little, ah, what have you done? Which is fine. That's exactly what we wanted to do. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and press the fiddle button and exit out of flight plan mode. And you're going to notice now that we've got the little magenta line of safety, just like I promised that you would have a couple minutes ago. Now it's worth noting if I press fiddle down here, ta-da, told you, I told you not to enter it in the other GPS, they're connected. Now let's say that we've gone ahead and created this flight plan. We're happy. We're going to get in the plane and get going. Uh, one thing you got to remember is to make sure that the source of your navigational data is coming from the actual GPS. If you intend to fly the GPS or you intend to use the GPS with the autopilot and nav mode. So just make sure you've taken a look at that. Uh, the other thing we want to make sure is we're not on suspend mode. If you turn on suspend mode, um, you're not going to have the ability to accurately, uh, particularly follow the particular GPS coordinate because now you've basically frozen waypoint sequencing. You can press OBS again to snap out of suspend mode. Now you notice when it exited suspend mode is that it forgot how to get to Gardner Mass. Told you, it got to be tricky. So to fix that, we can just go back to Fipple page, go to Gardner Mass, direct, and we can just press enter, enter. And what that should do is snap right back and you can see we're back in action and we're ready to rock as far as that goes. So now that you've gone ahead and got yourself all set up with a flight plan, uh, we can now go ahead and do our usual things. We can zoom in and now, we can change our view mode, we can switch to this mode. So we have kind of the classic navigation view, or we can snap to this one, which is kind of the typical view that some people think of. Uh, down here, of course, we can go to this page, which is my favorite. When I fly in the real world, um, I'm a huge fan of leaving the bottom one basically on this mode, where it kind of gives me the details. And I'm a huge fan of leaving this one kind of on map mode so I can kind of see where I'm going. Uh, the other thing that's cool in the real world is these will talk to your for flight. So you can actually plug your, uh, tablet, which obviously my guy is invisible, he'd have the tablet on his left leg right now, and it would talk to this flight plan. So now that our flight plan is all preset, uh, let's take a look at how you can change the flight plan. So let's go back to the FIPPLE page real quick here. And uh, let's say that we wanted to get rid of Echo Echo November. Let's say we don't want to travel directly up to Keene. We just want to go right to Manchester. Well, what we can do is we can come in here and press the CLR button. What that's going to do is bring up a little waypoint thing that's going to say, do you want to remove this waypoint? So we can say, yeah, gone. So as soon as you do that, of course, um, that one is toast. So now we've all gone ahead and got rid of the waypoint that we had a few moments ago. And now you can see that our new selected waypoint is going to be Gardner Mass, because again, that was the one we picked originally. Now you're probably saying, well, wait a minute. Um, what if I come up here and go like this? Well, that will give you the ability to add a new waypoint between. So let's say I want to go ahead and put, um, I don't know, let's do something really absurd here. Let's say I want to go up to Boston VOR. Again, I don't know why you would go to Boston VOR. It's a little out of the way, but hey, I'm, I'm the one who's demonstrating here. So let's go to BOS, which will take us right up there. BOS, Boop. that looks good to me. Enter, and you'll notice that that Boston VOR went between. Always select the one you want to add before. Now, let's say you've been flying around for a while and everything's fine. And you're cruising along. Everything's uh, super duper. And you want to go ahead and, you know what? I want to just go ahead and say I want to activate my leg between Boston and Manchester. Well, the way you do that is you simply take the big one, head over to Boston, Manchester. And if you bring up the menu, you're going to notice that it has this thing called activate leg. Now, if I press the enter key, notice I've activated the leg between Gardner and Boston. So if I go back to Fipple mode, and I go ahead and zoom out quite a bit here, you're going to notice that this leg, I told you this was a little absurd, between Gardner, which is right here, and Boston has now been highlighted. And since it's magenta, it's our currently selected leg that we can go ahead and fly on. Now, what's so cool about this is I can come back up here, go to menu, and now notice I can't activate this leg because it doesn't have a start point. But notice if I want to go from Boston to Manchester, I go back to menu, I could go ahead and activate this leg. Now that I've done that, I press the Fipple again. I don't think you'll be able to see this very well. Now, that's not too bad. But you can now see that our Boston to Manchester leg has been activated. Now, let's say you're flying around, and uh, we're kind of cruising around here somewhere like in the side of the, you know, this big, big lake, the Quabbin Reservoir, and they say proceed direct uh, Manchester. So you're sitting there going, oh, I'll press the direct button. Well, there's two ways you can do this. The first thing we can do is we can press direct two. We can come, oh, we're already selected Manchester. Give me a second while I fix that. Now, let's go reactivate the original uh, leg here. Boop, all fixed, sweet. So one way you could do it is you could press the direct key and you could come over here where it says flight plan and you could go ahead and select it. Now notice if I move to GDM and if I switch to the little big guy, see how all my flight plan legs are right here. So now all I have to do is select the one I want, press enter, and then press enter again to go ahead and select that particular position in my waypoint. Uh, cancel direct to nav. Uh, yeah, yes, please. So again, I can press clear. You can do a lot of things here. Now let's say we want to proceed direct Manchester and we're in the FIPPLE page. Well, that's super easy too because we can press press cursor, go down to Manchester, press direct, press the enter key, enter key. And now notice we have a single arrow pointing at Manchester, which means when you go like this, you'll notice that we have this lovely single arrow pointing at Manchester Airport because we're only approaching at that. Now they call you back and say, we've made a terrible mistake. We're so sorry. We wanted you just to fly the flight plan that you originally said. You're like, no problem because the flight plan is still loaded. So I can come in here, activate leg and ka-ching, look at that. And you can see that they thought of that when they designed this GPS. And you can see there's a significant added functionality to this version of the GPS over than the one they had originally. 
So that's it as far as uh, kind of giving you a good idea as far as flight plans goes. Obviously, we could do things like procedures, which are kind of add a little onto those flight plans. And uh, next time what we'll do is we'll take a look at kind of tweaking some of the menu options that allow you to really customize this view the way you like it. Enjoy.